Okay, so tonight our theme is badass, and you may have noticed the tiny little elephant hiding out in the top of our, our banner, and I've gotten a few questions about why the elephant, you know, why elephants and not emus, because emus were the obvious choice. Um, and I know, I, it seems like a stretch, but I would like you to hear me out on why we have the little elephant there. So tonight I'd like to start us off by taking us back to ancient Rome, to the era of the Republic, before the turn to empire and the decline. Rome in its like kickoff startup phase. <laughs> I'm gonna mispronounce all the Latin, I'm just gonna tell you right now. Carthago de Lenda Est, or Carthage must be destroyed. It's a direct and to the point quote, but it lacks the poetry that we're used to from most of the quotes that come down to us through the centuries. Um, it's not Wiki. I came, I saw, I conquered Julius Caesar. It's, it's really got the, the poetry. It doesn't have the wit of nullum magnum ingenium sine mixtura de mente fuit, where there is no great genius with some touch of madness, which is Seneca quoting Aristotle. And it doesn't have the modern relevance of in vino veritas. <laughs> in wine truth. So why has it made it this far? Why do we even know, why do we even know this phrase? Why has it come down through hist history so, uh, and become so common that a writer like Isaac Asimov would use it as a motif in one of his stories? It's mostly through the sheer power of repetition by this guy, um, Marcus Porcius Cato, usually known as Cato the Elder. Um, he was obsessed with Carthage. Carthage in the third century BC was the rival upstart nation to the young Rome and its power base was along the African, the North African coast of the Mediterranean and rising up into the bottom of the Iberian Peninsula of what is now Spain. Cato, Cato the Elder was absolutely obsessed with destroying them. He was known not just for repeating the phrase, Carthage must be destroyed, but he basically made it his tagline. He ended great speeches about Carthage, about destroying things, but he also ended random other speeches with Carthage must be destroyed. Like, <laughs> we're raising taxes on wheat and Carthage must be destroyed. And he did this to the point of almost absurdity. Other writers wrote about how he, he just was like obsessed with destru the destruction of Carthage. And you have to ask like why? Why? And the answer is because elephants. Obviously. Obviously. Okay, so before we go there, I want you to imagine a thing. I want you to imagine that you're in Spain. Lovely. Um, and you have some elephants. Let's say 37 of them. Congratulations. For, for reasons, you need to get them from Spain to Italy, but with as few people as possible knowing about the elephant, because like, it's a big surprise party in Italy, and you need to get the elephants from here to there, minimum number of people knowing. So you have a lot of options, like you have ferries, you have trains, you have all these like really nicely paved roads, you have heavy equipment options. You can plan it out ahead with satellite maps. You can call ahead and have elephant snack depots set up along the way. You have the advantages of modern medicine for possible elephant injuries or elephant-caused injuries. <laughs> but if we're honest about it, if any of us were told tomorrow that we needed to move 37 elephants from Spain to Italy, we would still be faced with all of the ways that it could go horribly wrong. Um, elephants probably, possibly, don't like ferry rides. Um, they eat up to 700 pounds a day, so that's a lot of like food depots that you have to set up. And hiding 37 traveling elephants is like a whole other bag of cats. Bag of, bag of elephants is a like, really bag of thing. So, I wanna take you back to that vision of traveling elephants and all the logistics and all the planning and all the elephant food and, the place, and place those plans in 218 BC. Because that's when Hannibal Barca, the Carthaginian military commander, led an army of men, probably as many as 30,000 to 60,000 men, uh, about 15,000 horses and 37 elephants overland from southern Spain up north into what is now, in Fra now France through the Alps and down into Italy to surprise the enemy with war elephant doom. It was the memory of these unlikely elephants that drove Cato to madness. I mean, if we don't destroy them now, what are they going to come with next? It's going to be emus. <laughs> so clearly, Carthage has to be destroyed. Side note, I feel like I really can't tell the story without talking about some of the exciting science that's happening. There's some, it, there's some very exciting microbial poop-related science. Um, so for centuries, 
The kind of people who argue about this sort of things have been arguing about exactly what route Hannibal took across the Alps because it's a, it's a, very, unlikely, a very unlikely kind of situation and no one has ever conclusively proven one pass or another path. And there were a lot of like uh, warring tribes to prevent you from taking one from one route or another one. But in 2016, um, a group from York University in Toronto published their findings on a mass animal disposition <laughs> at Col de Traverse at near Grenoble, France. So they followed clues from the original, the original sort of travel narrative that came out in the years after Hannibal's, Hannibal's uh, journey and determined a potential location from rock falls and other monuments that were, that were in the way. And they found a viable campsite for a reasonably giant army and a bunch of animals and they dug down and they used microbial genetic analysis of the soil and pollen analysis and a bunch of other stuff. And they were able to determine that there was a, a layer of disturbed soil that dates to the appropriate date that was full of the kind of microbes that you find in um, horse tongue. So they think they, found, they think they found the right place, but it's not totally settled. They're still working through all the details. And according to the papers, they said, <laughs> in exciting archeological news, there's even the possibility of finding an elephant tapeworm egg, and that would be the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow, <laughs> which is filed under archeology span as super glamorous. So anyhow, uh, back to Hannibal and his badass elephants and Cato the Elder freaking out all the time and yelling about Carthage. So you might think that based on, on his repeated, almost hysterical invocation of doom, that Hannibal won with his elephants. Hannibal did not win. I mean, he successfully made it through the Alps. He came through the Alps in 16 days, which seems insane even by modern standards. And uh, he brought these monsters of myth and legend down from the mountains into northern, into northern Italy and terrified everyone and kicked ass in the first battles. But eventually, over time, in the Second Punic War, he was defeated. So why was Cato so obsessed? They won. Rome won. Rome trounced Carthage. Why did this statesman panic over Carthage? And how, why is it that it is still something that we get today? And the answer is because Hannibal and his elephants were badasses. Being a badass is not about who wins. It's about those who fight with uncommon valor. They persevere. They encourage others to take up the fight, even against an unconquerable foe, against the tyrant, against overwhelming odds. History is full of these stories of badasses, and we've talked about a lot of them here before. We've talked about Josephine Baker and Hedy Lamar, St. Olga of Kiev, and La Maupin, who inspired our little Harvey tonight. And tonight we'll be looking at more stories to inspire our own inner badasses. So the invocation that I would like to begin this evening with is not only the echo of the memory of elephants that is Carthago de Lenda Est, but the phrase most often attributed to Hannibal purportedly when he was challenged by his generals at the foot of the Alps about how exactly they were gonna make their way through. How, sir, do you plan to get these elephants through those mountains? And his answer was, Iam invenium aut fastium, or something like that. Um, I will find a way or I will make one. So I would like to raise my glass tonight to those who make the way, to the elephants, 